Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I'll be doing a roundup of some of my favorite apps. I'll talk about 10 different apps with tips and hacks, and also show you all the different tools you can use for your design work. One of them is on the screen right now. It's an app that shows you designs from professionals. I believe many of you guys who watch my channel are interested in making design work with your iPad. But at the same time, I also hear from a lot of people saying things like, I don't have an eye for design, or there's no way I can do these fancy things and stuff like that. And that's also why I wanted to make this video to help you guys. I use these apps almost every day, and they really help me come up with design ideas, and they just really help me unlock my creativity. And using these designs and copying them, I'm sure even a beginner can make some great stuff, and the apps I'm going to talk about today are these things here. I hope you all can take something from this video and do some really creative things with your iPad too. So let's get right into it. Let's start with Pinterest. A lot of you probably know what it is, but it's an app for making photo albums. You can save pictures you find online to your Pinterest account and look back at them later. Once you open it, you'll see so many really cool pictures, videos, and art to browse. When you touch a picture, it will show the description. And as you scroll down, you can find some related content. When you want to save something, just press and hold. And when you press the pin button, it will ask you where you want to save it. And just make a new collection board and save it there. Now, you can just keep saving piling up pictures there. And when you go back to look at it later, It will show you all the pictures you saved there before. I made a bunch of different collection boards for different things. For example, in the interior, if there is a specific vibe I want to go for with my room, I can save all the similar pictures I see here. I can then come back to this later, like when I go to buy furniture and use it for reference. I also have a typography collection here. I really like your fonts and text design, so I can put those pictures here and review them later when I practice or something. Next is Flipboard. Flipboard is a new app, but it's got this cool format where you can flip through like it's a magazine. This sort of thing works really well with the iPad interface, so it's really great. For example, when you open an iPhone news app on iPad, the letters might shrink and become really hard to read. But Flipboard is the best news app specifically for iPad. All the articles are laid out in this catalog style, and the pictures are really big too. If you subscribe to some design website using this app, you get up to date design info every day. And with design, the images are always really important. So it's really awesome that Flipboard shows them so nicely. I personally use it a lot too. Next up is Behance. Behance is an app or a writer service made by Adobe. It's a site for creators and designers around the world where they can upload their work and make portfolios. Even some professionals post their artwork here, and you can see a lot of this really polished content. What I recommend is to go to the bottom of the page and look for the search bar. Here are all the content, photos, illustrations, graphic designs are nicely broken into categories, so you can pick whatever you like. You can also like and save content that you love, so definitely try this out. And for designers, you should definitely post your stuff on Behance. If you sign up with your email address, there's a chance you might be scouted as well, and many people seem to use it to find jobs too, so definitely use this to promote yourself. So basically, you can use this app to present your work and make it big. Now, for number four, this is Dribbble. It's actually pretty similar to Behance. The user interface is pretty similar, and so is the goal. It's a portfolio site for creators. But Dribbble seems to have more graphic design content. Logos, UI designs, flyers, and so on. It's more for these practical designs. Behance got lots of variety like videos, photos, and GIFs, but Dribbble is more centered around graphic design. 
I'm personally a huge fan of graphic design, so I often use Dribbble and I find it super useful. I especially find animations in Dribbble really cool. Using the search function, if you search animation, there are tons of these cute little pop animations. Animation isn't really my specialty, but if you need someone to make animation for you, you could use Dribbble to find a reference and then talk to the artist. Then you could ask them, could you make something like this and stuff like that. The animations here are just super helpful, and just watching them is super fun, so please take a look. Next up is Lightroom. Lightroom, I believe, is known as a photo editing app, but there is another cool thing about it. At the top, there is a little earth up here, so let's press it. And now a bunch of great reference photos come up. Lightroom users around the world post these here, and there are categories at the top to choose from. There are tons of really cool looking pictures here, and there's more. Let's take this cool picture here and press it. Now it displays the picture. This is the before view. Then we go ahead and edit it a little bit, and it comes out like this. It then shows this picture with the edit date. Let's take a look at this monochrome picture too. At first it was all color like this, but you can see I made it monochrome and greedy like this. At the bottom there's a confirm edits option. If you press it, you can see all the changes I made to make the picture like this. Isn't this pretty cool? For example, let's say you want to make a sporty picture like this, and you want to know how to give it this strong rough feel. You could look it all up here. There's also a save preset button here. Press it and the settings will be saved to your account so you can use them with your own pictures. I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't know this app, but if you're a Lightroom user, definitely check out this tab. There are so many really stylish photos. You can just look at them for inspiration or save their presets to use yourself. It's super efficient. Let's move on to coolers next. I've talked about it in the past, but it's an app for viewing color palettes. The five colors on the screen change every time you press the generate button, and you can find your favorite one. It's very simple. This is an app I use it often too, and you can just press at the bottom here, and if you want to fix this green and purple at the top here in place, you can just press the lock button, and then press generate. This way only the three colors at the bottom change, and just like this you can find your ideal color palette. I'm not logging at the moment so I can't save them, but if you are, you can save them, and you can also take a screenshot instead. Take a screenshot, copy paste it into another app, you can use these colors to make some great stuff too. Next up is Over. Over has a bunch of different design templates for you to look at, and if you want, you can use these templates to make your very own illustration as well. I personally find just scrolling through and looking at them already helpful. You can also find these categories at the top, and if you choose flyers, you get a lot of reference for flyer design. They also got a business card category, birthday cards, wedding cards, and so many other options. So just pick one and customize yourself according to what you want to make. For example, from the flyer category I mentioned before, we can take a magazine cover design like this one here. And if you press the screen, you can add or change the picture too. Just by swapping in your own pictures like this, you can easily make a nice looking magazine cover like this. These editing options are only available in the paid version, so if you have their free version, you can just scroll through and take a look at them. And if there is a design you really like, you can use it as a reference while you work in a different app. That can also be a good idea. Now for the next one. These are the last three. They're all apps for learning. Number 7, here we have Udemy. I think a lot of you guys probably know about this app. Once you open the app, you can find a bunch of paid tutorials for sale. 
you can choose the video you're interested in, make your payment, and then you can watch the videos and still learning. It's a very learning focus app. There is a website for Udemy too on top of their app. Using the search bar, you can find design tutorials, but also tutorials focused on business, engineering, and many more. You can search design or iPad, and a lot of videos will come up. When it comes to iPad still, my videos are free to watch and way better. I'm pretty confident in saying this, so make sure to use Udemy only after watching all of my videos. But for Photoshop, Illustrator, and other Adobe apps, I find their tutorials pretty decent. So if you're interested in learning them, definitely check it out. Next up is one called LinkedIn Learning. It's pretty similar to Udemy and lots of tutorials are on sale too. What's different from Udemy though is that with Udemy, you buy tutorials one by one, but with LinkedIn Learning, you have to pay a pretty decent amount up front and then you can look at all the tutorials you want. This one's teaching me the basics of an Adobe app. There might not be many for iPad in particular, but for people who are serious about learning, complete beginners, or anyone who wants to go professional way, it's great for learning the ins and outs of the software. It's got tutorials for various business-related skills, and for people who want to become creative, it's pretty interesting. I remember while I was studying abroad in the UK, I was using LinkedIn Learning quite often. I think it was called Linda in Learning or something like that before. But I used to watch their tutorials all the time. I probably watch it for like 5 hours a day, took lots of notes and study. I feel like they've given me a lot of good inspirations for what I do today. And that's how much useful information is available, so if you can, please give it a try. Next up is the last one. This is another Adobe one, and it's called Creative Cloud. Basically, it's an app for people who have Adobe software to manage all the different programs. And on the far left, there is a page label study. If you press this and then choose a program from the top tab, for example, Illustrator, we get some Illustrator tutorials. If you want Photoshop tutorials in there too, just press the Photoshop icon, and then they'll be added into the results as well. So you can take a look at these while you're making your own work. Adobe apps get updated pretty often, and it's kind of a hassle trying to catch up on their updates. But by just looking at this, you can see all the changes easily. I find it pretty cool. Especially with Photoshop and XD, it feels like they're updating every single week. I personally find it a bit troublesome to find what changed every time too. But if you look at different Adobe subs here, it will tell you all the changes. So if you use Adobe software, make sure to take a look at this. And that's the end of this video. How was it everyone? Was there at least one app you didn't know about? If you're just starting out, design and creative stuff might seem really difficult. But if you start out by copying what other people do, you can get a hang of things really quickly. So please take a look at the apps I talk about today and try to copy what you see there or what you think is cool. Then eventually you can create your own work. So please give it a try. And if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you have any other apps you recommend, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks of iPad, so please do that too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!